19 April 2021, and I'm joined by Senator Kalipani Pugeni. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? Happy Independence Day to you, your viewers, and indeed uh, all the Zimbabweans. Right. Thank you very much, sir. And today I just want us to have a quick discussion on a number of issues, but let's start off with independence. Okay. What is your view on the independence of Zimbabwe? Let me put a disclaimer. Uh, I was traveling from Bulawayo to Harare, so I've just arrived. I haven't even had my dinner. So if my energy is a bit low today than usual, now you know. Is it not because you're just about to be recalled? <laughs> uh, maybe you know more than I know. I'm going to be recalled for what come back with. What have I done? Have I moved parties? Well, let, let me tell you what I know. Yeah. Apparently, there has been a group of people in the MDCT that has mm. been communicating outside official channels. Mm. And they're just about to be recalled and some about to be disciplined. And this mm. is in the public domain. There's also a group that is organizing a march over 66 million. And mm. this is in the public domain. Are you not one of those people? Ah, well, I really have no idea of what you are talking about because uh, the last time you hosted me, you hosted me, and, and maybe let me just clarify this to the public domain because you did edit um, our interview. Uh, as we came to the end of that interview, you said, uh, thank you for allowing me to ambush you. You came to, uh, to me, I was at a friend's place and we were having a good time. We tried to accommodate you as best as we could. And it was nice of you to acknowledge that. Unfortunately, you edited it out. Uh, in that same interview, you tried your best to commit me, first of all, to say things or give certain positions with regards to the party. And I told you that I don't want to do that. And I favored you with the reason why I don't want to do that. And it is exactly what you are speaking to. And you will also appreciate that in that very same interview, I never spoke about anyone except two individuals. And those individuals, number one is Kalpani Puken, and number two is Dr. Kup. Now, what you can't do, uh, Gambakwe, and this is as a way of informing each other and educating each other about this democracy which we want to build, leave out the MDCT constitution, which I can speak to at great length, but let me speak about the national constitution. If I were to join your company today, what you cannot do is you cannot take away my agency. And the constitution protects my agents. What do I mean? Is the constitution protects me uh, against uh, any such draconian rules that says I cannot hold political views. I cannot hold, um, uh, uh, I cannot have free speech. You know, I cannot defend myself. Uh, so that's very, very important. Number two is uh, Dr. Kope requested me to be her mouthpiece, not only on political matters, on MTCT matters. No, when she has got a cancer foundation, you will find me there. When she's got her social and sometimes family things, you will find me there. Uh, I'm one of the only few, uh, I, do, I think it was just me and Chief and, and George Sibochi and maybe one or two other guys that celebrated her daughter's 21st birthday in South Africa. So you really can't want to regulate as a political party, and I'm not, talk, I'm not saying my party did that, but I'm simply saying those who are uncomfortable about me exercising my agency on my behalf and me also uh, lending my agency to Dr. Kupe at her request are mistaken because that is protected uh, speech in the first place, and that is a protected relationship by the Constitution. So maybe to answer you direct, I have not spoken to anyone 
outside the so-called uh, party line. I have not done that. For example, the very last interview that uh, seemingly uh, got a lot of people under the collar, you cannot point and say, here, you spoke about so and so. I refused. You, you said to me, you, and you know I hold a lot of views, but I refused, and I told you why I'm refusing, because I understood that there are some uh, overzealous people uh, that will uh, want to take advantage of that and try and abuse us. Okay. Let's go a bit deeper. Okay. Dr. Kupe, where is she? What do you mean right when now. you see you know, the geographical no, no. location right now? No, there was independence yesterday. Did she issue an independence speech? Or no, an independent speech? No, she didn't. Why? What do you mean why? She does was this. She, she issues statements often. Chamisa issued a statement. Any other party member, uh, leader issued a statement. Monzora issued a statement. Yeah, but as you are saying, any other party leader issues a statement. She didn't issue a statement this time around, and it's not the first time. I mean, I think she has issued a statement maybe in the last two, three years, but this time around she didn't issue a statement because she has no obligation to do so. Okay, I would have expected her to, to show up. It's unusual to me. She's in parliament. She's a former vice president. She's got a big following. People who voted for her. Why is she so quiet and not in the public domain? Is she under pressure to keep quiet? I think I answered that question last week. She is not under any sort of pressure whatsoever. And I, I think I also told you this. We are not going to be running commentary and answering everything. We, we, are, we, we are clear about that. Uh, you see, I had a lot of uh, misinformation and the uh, revision of history in your interview with Dan and, and Damba. Um, I was tempted to respond to it uh, today. But after I saw the comments and after I met people on the streets and I heard the praise that they were showering on Dan and how well he did by being factual and being calm and sticking to the issues, I, I then decided that no, it's, it's, it's not worth it. Um, but what I will do is I'm going to forward you the links to the much spoken about Extraordinary Congress. This is a recording that was done by the Heart and Soul uh, Radio. Uh, they were there throughout that Congress. So I'm going to send you those two links. You can put them on your website. You can put them uh, on the link under this interview and let the people watch. So that, uh, when you hear most of the misinformation that started about, um, then people can go and, and view for themselves. That thing doesn't need any interpretation. So no, Dr. Kope is not under any pressure, but she is clear that she's not going to be uh, doing any commentary about things because most of the things are pretty clear to people. OK, let's go to the records. Do you think you'll be recalled for what you are doing? Talking to me and also not disowning the American uh, MDCT executive. Why should I disown the American executive? You are enjoying your office as a senator. And the guys in, in the United States executive are saying, Monzora, Senator Monzora is not the president. But you are working with him daily. You are in, in Senate. Dr. Cooper is in Parliament. And you are not speaking out against it. Against what? The group in, in America is saying the executive of the MDCT is not the real executive. They are not elected properly. And yet you and Dr. Cooper are in Parliament. You are not showing support to that group, but you're also not opposing them. Yeah, but it's their democratic right. I, look, uh, by now I'm sure you know me, uh, even outside uh, these public engagements that you, you and me have. I respect uh, a democracy and democratic processes, and I respect fundamental rights. 
You cannot criminalize people holding views. That's number one. And I do not have a duty to stand up, or rather, I do not have a duty to begin to infringe on people's rights. They are clear that they have rights. They are clear that they've got views. They have the same views even under Dr. Mok and Twangirai. I was not under any pressure whatsoever to denounce them. Not that I would have. I would not have denounced them. I would uh, looking back now. So I don't understand why this pressure, this burden for me to denounce people, and why on Kalpani Pugin? Why not on everyone else? What, okay, what let's, let's start with you. What is this thing about this Kalpani Pugin that frightens people so much? You also spoke about me speaking to you. Why is it a crime for me to speak to you, Kamba? I have been speaking to you since 20... Is it 2019? Me and you have been speaking since 2019. Why is it a crime now? You were very vocal about Chamisa. I spent almost three months interviewing you. You were very vocal about Chamisa and how he usurped power and how he violently tried to burn Dr. Kupe in a heart. The same thing that you are saying happened at, at, um, in, in Harare, the Extraordinary Congress. But you are not distancing yourself from no, the position no, 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 that you have obtained due to being in this political party, the MDCT. No, you are being unfair when you are saying I'm not distancing myself. Uh, my views are well known out there. So are the views of uh, Honorable Senator Komichi, so are the views of Honorable Senator Mutsuri, and many others. And I told you last week, there is no point in me standing on the rooftop and repeating things that people already know. There's no point in that. Now, I'm saying to you, I have no burden whatsoever. My conscience is clear to Zimbabweans. You are clear now. You know right from wrong, largely to my efforts. And you must appreciate me. I must not be uh, uh, condemned for that. I must be affirmed to say I played a role in assisting Zimbabweans get, you know, when I was reading some of your comments, I saw a lot of people referring to 2023. And I was very happy that the people of Zimbabwe now are able to link our political actions, what we do during this time, to the vote. They now appreciate that their vote counts. They now expect something from their vote. So I was very happy when I was reading and people are like, hmm, okay, 2023 is coming, which is very, very good. They must do that with us. They must do that with the alliance. They must do that with ZANU-PF. It is a crime you, that uh, politicians you are somehow... Know that, uh, senator Pugin, you must know that you are not going to be a senator after 2023. Uh, uh, what informs you? Did the people vote you for you? You know, no, you... Uh, let, 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 let's, let's go into this in detail. The people wait, did wait, not wait. vote for you. Wait, 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 come back. I will educate you on that one anyway, don't worry. But you of all people, you can't with a clear conscience say that statement. You wanted me to give out my number public. I refused on several occasions until you spent your resources, bought me a phone so that I could have a number to give public because people were bothering you. That has not stopped. I can read you messages that I received from the last interview that I had with you. My phone has not stopped. This morning, for your own information, I was called by somebody who went to the mayor of one of the towns I will not mention and asked for my numbers. He got my numbers. He called me with the mayor and he said, we want to hear more from you. If our country can have more people like you, we are moving forward. And you have heard that sentiment over and over again. So it baffles my mind now if you think that I'm unelectable, no, come back. Okay. Can do better than this. All right. L let me explain myself. You are a, a very good speaker. And if I have a position in my company, I would employ you to come and work in my company. You employ the me. The question I'm asking you yes, I would employ you to come and work in my company. I spend Kambakwe. a lot of time with you. Come back. I'm a prince. I'm a prince. My father owns a keki in a thousand hills. Not a thousand keki, but a keki in a thousand hills. And prince don't 
uh, princes don't work for ordinary people. Okay, I, I get you, but I want to, to make my point. The point I'm making is that in 2023, you are not going to be a senator because the political environment where you operate won't allow you to be a senator. Why don't you use this opportunity to demonstrate your principle and leave this position of a senator, which is only left to two years, and show that you really believe that what is happening in the MDCT now is not supposed to be happening that way? Yeah, but you're making the mistake. Uh, and the mistake you're making is not to appreciate that I'm a senator which represents the people. And uh, I, I say to you, I can read for you uh, some messages that I've received. As late as yesterday, I received a message which said, in the history of our party, we have not had anyone who responds to messages like you do. I also have ordinary citizens. They are not necessarily in our party, but they are citizens of Bulawa and others are just citizens of Zimbabwe who come to me with their challenges. And again, Kambaku, you of all people should know because of the work that me and you do. How many times have I come to you asking for assistance for ordinary Zimbabweans that need help? Where do you think I know those Zimbabweans from? You know they are not related to me in any way, shape or form. You know that most of them, I know them for the first time. You have advised me several times how to run certain projects to raise funds for other people. There are kids who are at school now because of some of the work which I do. We do have the case of Brilliant, uh, the blind lady. That is at university today because of the funds, my personal funds, which I've advanced there and some of the GoFundMe, which I did. So I find it strange that you want me to leave all of that because trust me, the platform of being a Senate also helps me mobilize all these resources and even government offices and even private sector. And you want me to leave that what, for petty politics? No, I'm not going to do that. Now, if anyone indeed wants to go ahead, violate the constitution of the country, be petty, victimize me for no other reason except politics of rank, it's okay, they can do it themselves. Then Zimbabweans will judge them. Because I've asked you a question, I've said the video is here. You can play it backwards and forth. You will not find me speaking about an individual or speaking about MDCT. I spoke about the country. I spoke how the country must be run. I spoke about us being touched by what our people are going through. How can that be a crime for a senator to speak to his citizens? I represent people. I am a, a, a from the taxpayers. How can I not be allowed to talk back to them? I am in okay. this hotel. I'm in this hotel at the taxpayers' expense. How can it be a crime for me to talk back to them? I'm going to be paid, I think, on the 22nd. It's the taxpayers that are paying me. How can I not talk to them? Okay, so do you accept the current leadership of the MDCT? No, I, I think I've answered that question over and over again. It doesn't even arise. It, uh, that question doesn't even arise, uh, uh, Kambakwe. It's a sideshow that you guys want that the media is enjoying. I am not part of it. I am not part of it. You played, I think, I think um, uh, it's Blessed Mslanga, who tweeted me congratulating him, congratulating Senator Monzor. So how then do you ask me such a question? It was a big thing here. It was publicized that Pukin has congratulated. So what is the issue? OK, my question is answered. I, I, I like the way you've answered this question because this brings this matter to, to a rest. I think the, it will never arise again. You'll never hear me asking you this question again. Then you speak for Dr. Kupe. Yes. Has he accepted the same way you did? Has he congratulated uh, Senator Monzo? I'm very happy because Dr. Kupe did speak for herself. She did post a tweet, which tweet I keep referring you to, which you did play. So I don't know. I only speak for her on matters where she has not come out in public. She has come out in public. You can replay your, record, your, your reporting, which you did on it, or you can repost the tweet for people to go through it and make up their minds. But 
really it is not up to me to go out there and start again going through something which was so eloquently communicated. Okay. Well, I, I think we, we have done a lot of talking around this topic and it's clear to me if they were to recall you now, if anyone was to recall you now, there would be no basis for it because you have obviously said you accept Senator Monzora as the president of MDCT. What do you say then about the MDCT executive in America? If they go to court, are you going to support them or are you just going to tell them they are doing their own thing? Well, the, constitutionally, uh, and, and I'm talking about the MDCT constitution and even that of the country, Maybe let me give you a background for you to appreciate this. You see this thing of smart membership cards uh, in the yes. MDC. I came up with that idea. I know. And yes. I spent hours and hours in South Africa explaining it to the president, the then president, Dr. Morgan Swangra. I've even got cards which I did for him. Now, when I were busy with that whole concept, I also did conditions of membership, the revised version of it. And as I was busy with that, because now we had a situation where people will go in parliament and almost become a, a free agents, as it were. And then we also had all that issue of the secretary generals and whatsoever, and people wanting to run to court and just uh, put the party in sixes and sevens. And then I put a clause there which said um, that uh, you cannot go to court. Uh, our disputes will be settled internally. And so when I was doing consultations and somebody said to me, oh, come on, who can I expect better from you, man? The courts constitutionally are final arbiters of our disputes. You know, and, and I was a bit embarrassed, so I did change that. Now, what the United States of America are doing, number one, is constitutional within the MTCT. And it's also constitutionally in the country. Uh, to the extent that the constitution of the MTCT did not allow it, uh, they will still have they've been protected by the constitution of the country. To give you a perfect example, you remember this uh, man in South Africa there, your host country in, uh, I think it's called as Mall, where he saw this guy wearing his, his in Develle, uh, um, a traditional way. And, and he gets there, ignorantly so. He says, get out of my mall. I don't like the way you are, you, 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 I don't like what you are wearing. And he says, and he points, foolishly so, to right of admission. He says, right of admission. And you know how that thing ended. He lost the, his job. Because it matters not, back. we can put all right of admission reserved and whatever, but you cannot prejudice other people based on their tribe, color, tradition, and whatsoever, and think that that right of admission of admission reserve is going to work. Another perfect example, you cannot say to me, I'm giving you work, a book, and not understanding that you are a prince, I'm giving you work, <laughs> uh, but whatever happens to you, whether you are injured at work or you die, not safe, I cannot be held responsible. No, that thing is void ab initio. You remember we spoke about these things a few months ago. So it doesn't work, you're just wasting your time by writing that. So. I'm answering you direct. I cannot be the one infringing on their constitutional right to approach the courts if they cannot find a, 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 a joy with internal remedies. And, and okay. no pressure to be put on me. Uh, please, guys. Why should be pressure be put on me to say, do you support this one? You don't support that one and whatsoever. That's not politics. That's not why I'm in the Senate. I'm in the Senate to help people. One of the letters I received this weekend is a man who his brother was violently uh, beaten up by ZANU in 2008 runoff. Unfortunately, as a result of that, to those injuries, he lost his life and he left about six kids. And this guy says to me, I'm responsible for one of his kids and I'm as asking for assistance to take him to school. And I said to him, thank you so much for coming through to me because the party has a program of looking after victims. So I gave him the chairman's number and I gave him also the secretary general's number. 
And I said, please get hold of them. Make sure that this young person or this child gets the education which the father would have given. Because education, as we know, is a life changer for anyone. And if that child can get the education they deserve, notwithstanding that they've lost their father, but at least their future can be somewhat guaranteed. That's what I'm about, Kambakwe, and you know this better. No, now, I, I'm weary, really, of spending time on this petty politics. You would have seen today on Facebook, I was insulted, you saw that, uh, by someone acting on behalf of people or people who act claiming that they're acting on behalf of top leadership. But I'm not going to mourn about it. I'm not even going to respond to it, dignified by even responding, because that, that's a diversion to me. We've got bigger issues. Right now, me and you are not, we didn't even get a chance to speak about the, 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 the independence, 41 years. But look at the state of our roads, the state of service delivery, the state of education. Our kids just got 0%. You can talk COVID, but they expect us to do something for them regardless of the situation. Because the relationship between politicians and the voters must be a quick co-pro one, where you give me this in exchange for that. So basically, they give us their vote in exchange for us representing them in a manner that is acceptable to them. Okay. That's, what I want. That's the debate that I want to occupy myself with. Okay, but I, I think many people... They are not happy with that. They want you to answer the questions as a spokesperson for Dr. Kute. Let me tell you why. I've got a tweet on the screen from Dr. Kute. This is the tweet we've been talking about. Mm. She is disowning Senator Monzora as the president of the MDCT in this tweet. Am I wrong? No, I, I don't think that uh, she is uh, she is disowning anyone. There, there was a context to the twist, to, sorry, to the tweet which you are deliberately ignoring. Uh, there was reporting that Dr. Kupe is on her way. Uh, unfortunately, she was late for a press conference. And then she wrote that tweet. So you, you, you may want to favor your viewers with the background to the tweet. And then she went on to explain why she could not be part of that press conference. Okay, violence, illegitimate voters' role, as well as incorrect EOC, among others. Does this not nullify the extraordinary Congress? Well, like I said to you, and um, I, I can't remember whether it's you or it's another platform, uh, Prof. Madugu said, uh, well, yeah, it was me addressing the, the, the media. And, and people wanted me to put a position on what, what is your position uh, about so-and-so or whosoever. I said, no, there's a process which Professor Madug is involved in. Give that process a chance. He said he's going to give us a legal opinion. He has since given us that, that legal opinion, as you know. And the legal opinion was to the effect that... Uh, uh, pending any court successful court challenge, uh, uh, he is the bona fide president of the NDCT. So, and, and that was the, the basis for my congratulations, by the way. So I'm saying, for me, it's neither here nor there. Uh, when people are saying, answer this, answer that, just to satisfy their curiosity, I think it will be helpful for people to go back to some of the conversations which me and you have had in the past or which I've done, you know, with other, in other platforms. It will be really helpful. But for me to come every day, rehash things which have been uh, 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 spoken about. You know, somebody called me last week, I think it's blessed. Uh, he called me last week and he says, I recognize that uh, Dr. Kupe has changed from acting president to vice president. I said, well, I didn't know, but I, I'm sure it tells you her state of mind where she is. But it does not nullify the points which she raised. Now, uh, you, you need to 
take what I'm saying together with what I told you in our last interview, that we have done great work in conscientizing the country at large about the constitutions, internal democracy, intra-party relations, violence, and all those things. And maybe it's time that we pass the baton to people like you and the greater population to be able to take these things up and act in harmony with what they know. Okay, I, I get you. And I think everyone here understands what you're saying. You, you and Dr. Kupe are now accepting Senator Mwanzora as the president of the MDCT. And basically you are throwing the guys in the United States of America under the bus. Is no, that not the wrong. Yeah. no, you are wrong. Remember, the guys have been in your platform here and they've told you that they are suing all of us as leadership because we did not give them an EOC that rose to the standard which the Supreme Court had, uh, had ruled. That's what they said, right? Now, I'm not sure uh, what you expect us to do uh, when people are saying we're going to go to court. You, considering what we went through in 2018, we had to wait for over two years for that judgment to come. And uh, a lot of things were overtaken by events. But maybe the point which I want to make is that having exercised that patience, why not give these guys a space and chance? So that if the courts come and say, you, what, you know what, you are wasting our time, you've got no case, they will accept that, <laughs> I'm sure, because they have decided to go to the court. But then if the court say, no, actually, you know what, you have a case here. I hope that we then as the part will also accept that. Okay. I think we've talked for 30 minutes. My intention was that we talk for 10 minutes. Is there anything else you want to cover that we've not talked about in these 30 minutes? No. Uh, safe to say I'm really worried about the much spoken about the third wave. So it's really time uh, for us now to be even more cautious. I appreciate that the vaccines are here and I encourage everyone, especially those with underlying conditions to make sure that they get vaccinated. Uh, but it's not time for us to stop the social distancing. It's not time for us to stop the washing of hands every now and then. It's not time for us to be complacent, but it's time really to make sure that we come on the other side of this COVID thing uh, very, very strong as a country. And okay, again, my final, and I, my final, and final again, question. And again, happy 41 years old Zimbabwe. <laughs> my, my final, final question. Yeah. Dr. Kupe, is she going to contest in the upcoming Congress, uh, the Ordinary General Congress, which is coming before July? Well, I don't know. I haven't conversed that point with her, but if I were to advise her, I'll tell her not to, not to do that. Okay, and, and I know she takes your advice. So let's say Dr. Kupe doesn't contest. Who would you consider as a suitable vice president? Is Senator Mzuri really a vice president? Do you want the MDCT to continue with two vice presidents? Uh, no, I think that, that point I have made over and over again, sometimes here in your, in your show. I, I've, I've been told you the other time when I to the other panelists that um, uh, China is I think, a billion, I think, in terms of citizens, in citizens, but they've got only one vice president. America is over 350 million. They've only got um, uh, uh, Mayor Kamala Harris as, as a vice president. So I think my thoughts on that are, are very known. But let me say this to you, as to who becomes what in the MTCT, I'll leave that to the rank and file of the MTCT. But uh, as Kalpani Puken, my obsession right now is whatever role I can play to assist the, 
the other masses I can do. Let me address this issue again. Thank you for this opportunity. Let me address this issue. You know, every time I read uh, comments here, you know, I can see that some people have no clue of why some of us are in parliament. Uh, you, you, you have the privilege of knowing me before I was in parliament. And you know that from a, a financial point of view, I was more secure and better uh, than, before, than when I came to parliament. So I'm much poorer now from a partnership point of view and from an economic benefit point of view. Uh, because I have the privilege of, of about two or three countries I can live in the diaspora like the citizens and enjoy the benefits of jobs, business and everything. But I've left all of that like the biblical Moses choosing to suffer affliction with the people of God. And I've chosen to come and really uh, suffer the water shortages that are happening almost every other day or every day, morning side in Bulawayo where I live, uh, suffer electrical cuts which are happening almost every week. Again, these roads and the potholes that are dead traps, I am here. So I see a lot of people like 2023 are gone. I'm saying this. And, and you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a humble person, and I've heard other people say, uh, testify to that. But I'm not stupid as well. Uh, I want to say that if I'm not back in 2023, it's not going to be disadvantaged, Pukin. If anything, it will be, I'll, be, I'll be in a better situation than where I am. There are people who are going to be disadvantaged when I'm not here. So people must stop. They must stop abusing themselves by saying we're going to fix you, you're not going to be there, you are no, no, cut, cut it now, it's, that's not it. I'm not here for okay. the reason you would have been here or why you think I'm here, I'm not here for that. Okay, I, I'm personally going to ask you to work for me if you're not in the Senate. Honest, I'm not lying. So look forward to it, 2023. <laughs> I'm a prince, Kambako. We don't work for ordinary people. <laughs> right. So let's let's recap. My key yeah. takeaway from yeah. this interview is that you have accepted that uh, Senator Mwanzora is the president of the MDCT and on the behalf of a, a spokesperson, obviously, for Dr. Kupe, you have the same. You've accepted the same. And in fact, the new information that I took from you is that you, you would advise her not to run for president during the ordinary Congress, which is coming up before July. Am I correct with this? Yeah, you are correct. But look, if you are saying not run for president, you you then thinking that I'm saying run for a different position. No. No, I, 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 I don't think the environment uh, is conducive for this is me, I, trust me, this is me. I have not conversed it with her. She might even be angry with me for saying this. I don't know. But as Kalpani Pukin, the, 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 the environment, if, if, it, if it persists, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you want to do the same thing over and over again and, uh, and the outcome is the same. I, I don't think you want to do that. Uh, the violence that she spoke about, if it's still there, then what do you do? Uh, okay. The, the manipulation of so many things that she spoke about, if it's still there, what do you do? So if the conditions don't change, wh why, wh why, you know, wh what is the point? Unless the conditions change, if the conditions change, yes. But if she still sees the conditions in the manner that um, she articulated, then there's no point. <clears throat> Okay, I, I can say you have built a lot of bridges today and you have probably gained the respect of a lot of people who were otherwise opposed to you or who were suspicious of you and Dr. Kupe. And I'm sure to, from tomorrow, I see a completely different MDCT from what you've said here today. I, I also hope that all the other guys in the MDCT, uh, Senator Monzora and all the people around him they get to understand more how you feel, how you think, and how Dr. Kupe feels and things. And the guys in America, I want to bring them here. This weekend, I want to bring 
uh, Chairman Dan, I want to bring Mr. Chaponda here. And we want to see how what you have said reconciles with what they are doing and also the report over the six million. This is something that needs to be sorted. And I hope that we'll be able to do it on your slot on Saturday. You, you have a slot with me here. Yeah, <laughs> you got me angry this Saturday. I was so prepared that they, well, you, you, you preferred Ambassador Mutsaka over me. It's fine. He's a national leader. I, I, I understand. But let me say this, uh, Kambaku. My politics is the one of uh, disagreeing without being disagreeable. Uh, so you will appreciate that uh, if I expect something, say, from someone like Nelson Chamisa, I expect the same from my own leadership. And uh, you, you were accusing me earlier on of, of not speaking as I did uh, when it was Chamisa, and I told that it's other people to do. And you would have seen that I'm also not saying anything about him because I'm rational like that. If I say anything now about him, what I then do is he will say, what, what did he say? And then he will start taking pics and, and, and clips from the EOC. Now I'm reasonable enough to know that any reasonable person will do that. So you, you must know that uh, when you find yourself in a, in a hole or in a pit, stop digging. So I, I think if you are to take anything else, anything out of the interview, which uh, Tyson did, I, I think with Mkoma uh, Trevor Nube, is that there, are, there should be limits to how we treat each other in a political contest. I think that's the only valuable thing you can take out of that. The rest, you can throw that in a garbage. Uh, the man is not fit for purpose. He's really a waste of time. Uh, but one thing you can take is that there should be limits to how we treat each other in a political contest. Okay, I think we should end it at this note, and I really appreciate uh, the conversation we had. And I would like to refer everyone to the interview that Mr. Uh, Senator Kalipani Pogen is referring to with Ambassador uh, Chris Mchangwa, he was referring to a lot of investors coming into Zimbabwe because they had a meeting with bankers in Cape Town. So go and have a look at that interview. I think it's a few interviews back from this one. And it's very exciting for me. I don't want my country to, to do badly. And I'm sure that's why uh, Senator Pugani left South Africa, the UK, to, to go to Zimbabwe because of the love of the country. So... Thank you very much, uh, Senator Kalipani Pugeni.